Hi there, Linda Goodall here with another little hatch scratching. I've always preferred to pre-cut my appliques rather than to try to trim off a piece of fabric after you've stitched it down in the hoop. That's a process I call the blob method. I really feel that pre-cutting gives you cleaner edges, it speeds your machine time, and it reduces hoop distortions that can occur when you're trying to trim off that fabric and you use your fingers to poke the fabric up a little bit in the hoop to get to those little tiny corners. Let me show you how you can make a template out of Hatch. The current version of Hatch does not come with a, an option to automatically create a cutter file for say your Cricut or your brother's Scan and Cut or your Silhouette. But we can make templates and I'll show you how. It's a little roundabout, but it's, it's not too hard. So open up your applique designs. We can see that we have an applique here. I can tell you that this is also an applique, this big gray area, but because I use the get rid of the overlap trick. You don't see any fabric back there. This is another one that has an overlap, so you don't see any fabric in this applique area. Whereas these are all just basic appliques. Here I have another kind of applique for the inner area. So let's just let's just pick this. See, it's already selected. I'll copy it, create a new document, and paste. There it is. Turn on tree view. You can see that I've picked a fabric for this one. I don't always pick a fabric. We'll go back to the lamb and this is the applique piece here. Copy. Paste. And then we'll go to our little bat guy and we'll select his belly. Copy. Paste. So you can put as many of these in a file that you want. You probably want to not make it much bigger than what you can print. So now we need to find this gray part. And I'll just scroll up. And it's right there. So copy and paste. So here are our objects. We need to split this apart break that apart. Well, so we'll go to the applique toolbox. We'll choose break apart and we'll break this one apart. Now if you're using the default settings, you haven't colorized anything really differently, then this kind of hot pink color is the applique. So here's a trick here. If you go over here, you can just select all the colors that aren't that hot pink and delete them. Go back to objects. I like to have it expanded. And then we'll go to fit. So this one was originally overlapped here. If I had copied that whole piece in, this would have been overlapping and we would have wanted to separate them. I could have copied them all together, but I didn't. So there they are. Let you fit. I'm going to change all the color to black. I'm going to get rid of these little placement stitches and I'm going to turn off my grid. So those are all my template pieces. Now, the way we get them out is we go to Output Design. We'll go to Capture Design Image whole design, save to disk. I can't print from my Windows side. I'm on a Mac. So I'll click OK and we'll just save it to the desktop. Well, we'll just save it where it is. And now what I'll do is I'll go open that. So there's my design and I can send that possibly to a cutter, but it's a PNG file. PNGs are bitmaps. Most of the cutters require an SVG. Now, yeah, I could open this up in a graphics program and save it as an SVG, but SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. Even if I save this bitmap as a vector, it's not going to be a real vector. It'll have an SVG extension, but it won't be a, a true vector. And some of the cutters will not recognize that as a true file and won't work with it. I know that at least a couple years ago 
you couldn't bring this into the scan and cut online software and make this into an FCM file. And I, I don't know if they've changed that. The current version can't make a cutter file automatically. There are programs that will. Imbrilliance does. And I do also use Imbrilliance. I use Imbrilliance mostly for um, editing and if I wanted to make a template some other way. So that's a good thing to have. I digitize in Hatch and I edit in, in Imbrilliance if I only have a stitch file. On my computer, I do have a way to make this into an SVG and I'll tell you how I do it because some of you have already asked me how I did it. So I'll save this design as a DST file onto my Mac. I'll open it up in my Mac digitizing software, which, must, uh, which is a pro program. Then I can copy and paste into Adobe Illustrator and save as an SVG, and it is a real vector. Now, that's a ridiculously expensive way to go, and I don't recommend it. It's just that I have that opportunity to do that in my system. And you may have software that you could somehow open this up and then save it out as a a vector image. I don't know what programs do that. You'll have to figure that out on your own. So I just wanted to share this with you because I've been working on these little sweetie donut appliques. These are three inch tall letters. They will not be a font. They will be individual letters, individual designs. Hopefully we'll see a future update to Hatch that will let us automatically create the cutter files for our various cutters. But in the meantime, this is what we can do. And what I would do is if I didn't have a way to make it into a digital cutter file, I would just take that file, print it onto a fusible tearaway or even freezer wrap that I fuse lightly to a piece of printer paper. Then I fuse it to the front of my fabric and I cut it. I find that if I try to print it onto regular paper and then uh, spray it with adhesive and stick it onto my fabric, I'll get some shifting. Maybe not on a really simple shape like this, but on this one I would. And you have to have exact precise cutting when you're doing a pre-cut method. So I hope this has given you some ideas of how to work with your program. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, please comment, please like, and please come back. Thanks.